So if I've got this function and I want to type in a parabola that will pass through those points, I've got three points that the parabola needs to pass through on each case to get the outer parabola. And then the inner parabola has got to look something similar to these. So I want to map on a possible parabolic equation that would give me each of those. Okay, so we start with the first one. So let's say I erase that and that, and I can see that that is the parabola that I want to follow. So I can see that the turning point for this parabola is 3 and 7.5. That's a good starting point. So for this parabola over here, I can use the form y equals a times x minus p squared plus q, where the turning point is given by pq. And in this case, it's 3 and 7.5. And if I substitute x equals 3 and y equals 7.5, so a is going to be equal to a multiplied by that will equal that. Um, let me see if I can just go. Yep, that's fine. Okay. So this is going to be 7.5. And that's going to be my y value. This number here will be 7.5. And that p value will be 3. So it'll be y equals a x minus 3 squared plus 7.5. And all I need to do now is find the respective a value. To find the a value, I've got to give a point and substitute it in. So if I substitute the point 0, 0, I can get a. And so 0 equals a, 0 minus 3 squared plus 7.5. That'll become 9. And it'll be negative 7.5 divided by positive 9, which will be some value. I can write this as 15 over 18, negative 15 over 18. And then divided by 3, will become negative 5 over 6. So therefore, my equation will be y equals negative 5 over 6, x minus 3, and then that's 15 over 2, so plus 15 over 2, or 7.5. Or we could use decimals all the way through. And I also want my domain to be restricted. I want my domain to be restricted, so that means I've got to supply some kind of restriction on the domain, which means that it's going to go from 0 all the way till 5, and then it must stop there. So it must start at 0 all the way till 5, including, all right? So my x values must be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 5. And at domain restriction, hopefully we can put it into this. So we're going to type this equation in now. Let's see if it sort of maps onto that line. So if we go negative 5 over 6, Okay. Um, they've actually calculated it for you in Desmos there. So I've just put a bracket just in case it didn't. So that looks nice now. That's going to be x minus 3 squared plus, and I'm just going to put 7.5. Or I can put 15 over 2, 15 over 2 like that oh there we go so it's gone through those two points but you can see it's going past that point it doesn't actually go through 5.5 which is okay i mean we want to get it to look like mcdonald's and maybe more or less right more or less look like mcdonald's now i need to obviously bulge it out here a little bit so what will happen if i change three into two for example that would shift it right and if I change 15.5, 15.2 into, I mean, 15 over 2 into another number, it'll shift it up or down. That'll be the Y. So which means if I have to change anything when it comes to bulging, it's going to happen with the other parameter, which is this one here. So what if I change this to 7? What if I change this to 2? And we can see it's bulging out, right? Or 3. But it's not going to go through the correct points, which is ideally not what I want. So... Let's say I stick with my calculation and maybe I'll just shorten the other one. So I'm going to adjust my model to look like McDonald's, but obviously now it's not going through 5.5. And it doesn't have to specifically go through 5.5, but it can sort of give you the idea of it. If I do exactly the same thing with the parabola that's running from 2 
let's say, and let's say we go two to the left here, which will get me to four. And it goes all the way up to this point over here, which is three to the right and six. I can see that that equation is going to follow the same trend. Y equals a x minus three squared plus six. And then I substitute a point in there, which would be in this case, two and zero. And I make x equals to two and y equals to zero. Gives me negative one squared, which is one and it becomes negative six, right? So therefore this equation is y equals to negative six, x minus three squared plus six, and let's put that in there as well. Okay, so here we go, y equals negative six, which is my a value, x minus three, all from the bottom right end of the screen there, plus six. And there we go, we got the the inner part of the McDonald's, we can also change the color over here by going into settings, changing this color, keeping it red, let's say, or we could make it yellow. I mean, it's McDonald's, we could make both of them yellow. And let's erase that part over there. All right, so we got this now, which looks like a McDonald's almost. All I need to do now is create another two on the other side. Right, so what I end up doing is I take the original function and I start doing some kind of transformations. I do horizontal transformations. I do, um, in this case, a horizontal transformation from three all the way till seven, which means I've got to go from three all the way till seven. So I can see that this next equation over here is going to be a horizontal shift of this first one to the right from three to seven, so we're plusing four. And when you shift right, what you have to do is just change that value over there in the opposite direction. So it'll be minus seven, x minus seven. So if I simply change the first equation into, by minusing four, which is the opposite of plus four, showing a horizontal shift to the right, because whenever you put a plus in here, it shifts left. Whenever you put a minus in here, it shifts right. So if I put a plus in there and it shifts right, I mean, uh, plus four shift right, I would put this as negative four, so minus seven, and keep everything else the same because we want the shape to be the same, etc. So let's let's copy that whole thing, and we're just doing some kind of horizontal translation, making this minus seven. Maybe let's have a look. There we go, and let's change the color into McDonald's. But then at the same time, we want to provide some kind of restriction on X for each one. So the first restriction on X was going to be from zero until five. Okay. So let's say zero, because I can see they intersecting at that point. So I'm just going to quickly put that there. X less than or equal to five. Close that up. And you can see it's now restricted the graph up to there. On that same token, I need to shift this one here to the right as well. I'm just going to add this in here as well. So the second equation, the one on the inside is also shifting to the right. So let's take that from there, change it into that color. And let's add in. So this is going to be zero is less than or equal to x less than or equal to. Actually, this one is from two until four. This one is from two until four initially, and we're shifting everything to the right. So it's going to be centered around three plus four, which is seven. So it's going to go from six until eight, six until eight. Okay, so I'm just going to put that in there. And I need to put a domain on each part. Okay, so I'm going to put a domain on each part. So there's one there. This one here is going to go from, we can see this should be, that domain over there, starting from two up till four. So let's put two as the first parameter, right? So that's two, and the second parameter is four. And that's gonna be where it's equal to. We can also make this equal to, but just putting equals, it will, it will change it automatically into equals. And this one changes it automatically into equals over there. And actually that was supposed to be for this top one. Over there. 
Then we're going from 0 to 5. We shifted everything up by 4. So this is going to go 0 plus 4 is actually going to be from 5 onwards, actually 5 up to 9, I think. 5 to 9. No, 5 to 10. By the looks of it, it's going all the way to 10. All the way down. So if I erase my graph, if I erase whatever I've written, it's starting to take shape. I just can't see the second equation there, the second part of this one, um, because I haven't shifted it. I haven't shifted it. This is going to go to seven, right? There we go. So there we go. That's going to be in there. Now I've got my McDonald's, I've got my McDonald's symbol. And I also need to maybe extend this all the way down a little bit further than that. So maybe I should start at uh, negative 0 0.4. 0.3 or 0 0.2 so I can have so it's a bit of a, a longer line on that on that end and I would end on that same token with that same equation on the other side I would end at 10.2 as well so it extends just as much and then I would extend likewise these to 1.8 right Oops, that's too much. So maybe 1.9. Or maybe 1.95. 1.93. I could I could substitute negative 1 into the y value and get the exact x value for that as well. Right? So what I want to do now is extend just that bottom part. Maybe just a little bit more. I'm going into guessing here, which is not ideal. We should be calculating this. Right, so I put 1.92, and that's 0 0.08 added on to 8. So 0 0.8, 0 0.08. Yeah. And I then have a line that's going straight across connecting these two. And that line is the line y equals to negative 1. And it's starting at the x value. It starts at the x value, starting from negative 0 0.2 and continuing until 1.92, forming that particular line there. And then that's the line y equals to 1. We then do exactly the same thing again. And again, actually, this one is going to be equal to zero because this is the domain between four and six. This is between four and six, the x intercepts. Four and six. In there, the blue line. And then the last one here will start at 8.08. Continuing until uh, 10.2. Continuing until 10.2. And in each case, we want to make these the same color. So using graphical methods and the ability to manipulate an equation, what have I actually done here? I've created a McDonald's symbol, right? Using all those different bots brought together into one.